morning guys and welcome to day seven where we continue to ride to the roof of India. So on day seven, it's ride to Daxham. This is the longest route so far, 230 kilometers, and we're gonna be riding at an altitude of 12,467 feet. So we've got the bikes all parked up over there. The mechanics go to work and just check them over, make sure they're okay for this is the longest ride so far. Uh, the tents were interesting last night, slept very, very well. I think once you've been on such a long ride, you're just absolutely exhausted. Uh, we're kind of at about 12,000 feet as well. Hey, today's gonna be a good one, it should be an exciting one. We're doing what they call the cliffhanger. It's one of the most dangerous roads in the world. <music> Right guys, so we're just getting set off. We're already in a bit of a mud bath. Uh, the locals were saying they had some heavy rain uh, in parts of where uh, we are heading. Um, here we go, a little bit of a the sinky mud challenge. We've kind of got a tough 40% off-road section we've got to go down the bit we came up yesterday and that was just big loose rocks everybody said they had a nightmare including myself on that bit we've just got to get through that safely to be honest because if you go down there it's hard so we've got 230 kilometers to do today uh, some of it's going to be tarmac some of it's going to be off-road um, and we're going into the uh, Jamal Kashmir region uh, we're going to do a bit called the uh, cliffhanger it looks kind of exciting and um, it's just a ledge that you get to ride round and uh, it's very short, very tight. I don't think you can get cars round there. So we've also got some uh, checkpoints to go through, some security uh, checkpoints. Uh, this is where we get all our documents out. So I think, I think people are gonna change. The culture's changing. It's all Islamic. So we've gone through the, the Buddhist religion to the Islam religion. Um, today is Friday, which is prayer day for them. And um, so when we get to the hotel, if we want things like to have a drink, some alcohol, then uh, you know we have to get their permission. Friday could be a dry day, we'll find out later. So yeah, this, this is the bit yesterday. It doesn't look that bad on camera, but it's a lot of rock, so it's a first gear job. The problem with this little bit, it's not been uh, compacted down. Just got to take it steady. And we've had quite a lot of repairs on the bike, so, you know, the, the support trucks can only carry so much. Last night there was clutches being changed. I mean, the good thing about these bikes is the seat height is pretty low, so you can you can duck paddle your way through. All right, I just want to make sure everybody else gets through okay. Hold well on, Tim. Yeah, everybody seems to be uh, coming through okay. Excellent. Good work, guys. Oh. Right. So the one thing I forgot to do this morning, which is one of the most important, is clean the uh, drop-down visor. So already, let's give it a wipe with a glove. Yeah, it was a bit different camping last night. Um, <laughs> there was uh, me and my buddy Phil were in the tent, and we've got all our luggage in the uh, in the tent as well, in between. Um, and uh, yeah, let's just say it was a little bit tight. And um, things like the uh, the showers and the toilets are 
just basically a hole in the ground and the shower well it wasn't really a shower it was just a uh, a pipe that was feeding off uh the running water up the hills and uh, that was it <laughs> so that, that was pretty much the uh the, the basic accommodation but it was great uh, we sat there, if you have a few beers, light the bonfire. Um, here's the guys look like bashing them rocks down. It's uh, it's just a 24-7 job, that one. I'd, I'd got my hoodie and my winter coat on because the temperature drops massively. Um, it just, as soon as that sun's gone over the mountain, woof. You know, but you, you're surrounded by these uh, kind of glaciers. But it's beautiful, the stars come out, the sky is really clear. And then you wake up in the morning and uh, you know you're just surrounded 360 degrees of mountain views again it's just so picturesque the tribal people in this area are absolutely fantastic you know uh, which they have been throughout this whole whole journey um, so far people are just so helpful and, and so pleased to see you and uh, they come and have a chat and they're generally interested in you food wise a lot of the breakfasts have been like scrambled egg toast and, and curry if you want it but I've lost track on how many curries I've had because um, I've, I've done a couple of Indian breakfasts and I've done some Indian lunches and uh, obviously Indian food in the evening so um, I've kind of been having like three curries a day but the food has been absolutely amazing and last night's food was brilliant as well at the start of the day when you think oh 230 kilometers it's not that bad but when you can see the speeds we're doing now we're doing about 15 mile an hour 20 kilometers an hour you know just just rolling down the hill and uh you know we'll perhaps go a little bit quicker when we get onto the uh the open bits but it's um it does take a long day uh, we've done 10 hours on the bike some days but that's part of the fun you know this is an extreme motorcycle adventure for this dog here look <laughs> the dog back there it's the first one i've seen that attacks the bikes <laughs> we've just made our way uh, down that 20 kilometer uh, trail uh, from the campsite that we was at and we're back on the main road uh, and then we're off to uh, Jamal and Kashmir whoa we're airborne you don't have to go that far and that the weather's so different so uh, they were saying they've had uh, landslides and stuff so hopefully the roads we will be cleared uh, or we can get the bikes through so yeah a lot of uh, a lot of sand on these these downhill trails all the horses are out having a little feed over the bridge whoa big rocks hairpin turns and sand I'm shattered There's a couple of horses out my way horse This is getting tougher. We've just managed to catch up, me and my buddy Phil catch up with the team leader. Um, not sure what's gonna happen here. Uh, see, that's blocked off there. I think the, the bottom, where this truck's backing in, that was a road before. Come on, little Enfield. Yeah. Right. This probably means it's gonna put a lot longer on our day. Oh, we got some muddy trails now. Whoa! We're slipping all over the place. Come on. Yeah. So I'm wondering whether 
because that bottom road was sure that was going to be the cliffhanger or not so we're going to find out you know one of the things with these one of the things with these trips especially this one you know the, he's, he's always adamantly said that um you've got to be prepared to turn back even if you've done a 10 hour ride imagine doing these roads in the dark whoa nearly come off nearly come off oh oh what's happened what's happened to luminous phil mate what happened i just have to look at these daisies oh the daisies yeah they're, they're nice ain't they this time of the year <laughs> oh we've got to watch him <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> That's what you get for being overconfident. He thinks he's at the Dakar rally. So this is the road we're just about to go down. You can see in the distance how it just sweeps all the way down this mountainside. How cool is that? Right, that bit of road I've just showed you. We'll help with a turn the key. We're going to take you down that. Oh, if we get the bike started. When you look at it from the top of the mountain, it doesn't look that uh, that bad. Whoa. Um, but it's actually quite big when you get on it. This is uh, all over the place. <coughs> we'll let uh, Luminous Phil take the lead. We come around the corner that quick, this barrier was down, so obviously another security checkpoint is going to let us through. Thank you. There you go, that's kind of what you want, isn't it? It's just a right pain in the arse if you've got to get off your bike, get them documents out. Right, so, uh, you know what it is? It's chai time. So some of the drinks you get in India as well, like the soft drinks, uh, they're like the sort of thing you used to get in the uh, in the 80s. Uh, they're just absolutely loaded with sugar. It's probably 60 grams of sugar just in this one drink alone. So I just want to show you this Scorpion EXO ADF 9000 Adventure Touring Helmet. Uh, this helmet's been absolutely brilliant so far. Um, what it does come with which works brilliant for me is a gopro mount you can swap the chin piece out you pop this plastic thing on here and then you can attach your gopro to it you can see the amount of dust because i'm riding around kind of with the visor down and uh, the dust is just getting in anywhere so at some point i'm gonna have to take this apart and just clean it all out maybe maybe put the airline in there um, but you can see the amount of dust that's going in but super impressed with that helmet it's working really well so yeah, it's always nice to have a little stop and uh, get off the bike. So basically the boss man was telling us we can't do uh, the cliffhanger because um, there's been landslides, that section's been shut down and uh, like I said, things can change by the day. When we had something to eat back there, I was just having a little uh, refreshment. There's a huge explosion, so somewhere down here they're obviously uh, blowing the blowing the boulders up or or clearing the road alex uh, was just saying to us last year that um, there was a sniper that took out one of their security because in kashmir they've been a bit of unrest so we get past this uh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh we're down we're down oh. We are down. 
<laughs> we are down. Oh. Oh. Seven. Cheers. Oh. Yeah, good. <laughs> so, I've had my first off. Yeah. It's a bit of a pathetic crash out to be honest. It's this car that kind of got in my way. It's like, you have to pick one side or go to it. We've got a problem now. All the bikes were stopped just around the corner. I thought I'd have to spend ages uh, catching them up. And um, let's just uh, turn the ignition off. Let's go check this out. Um, looks like we've got a collapsed bridge. The power of that water coming down. Um, the size of some of these rocks. Oh yeah. Well, it looks like we can still go over. So you probably see the digger up there. That's uh, just pulling the uh, pulling the boulders off. We've got all these donkeys that are getting a bit agitated. One of them kind of like took a little bite out of the uh, the other one. So obviously the bridge has collapsed there. And the road goes up to where you see that truck there, and then there seems to be nothing beyond that. So I'm not quite sure how we're uh, how we're going to get through. Him pushing that away. See that big piece there? He's trying to trying to knock it knock it out. There it goes. Whoa! Okay, so you can see the diggers just moved down to the lower bit. We've been here nearly two hours now waiting for them to clear this bit of road. Right, so that's the road cleared. I mean, it's took probably about two hours, I think. But we are off. This is gonna be quite tough because this has literally just been dug up, so. So not getting much traction. Gonna get round on the the outside bit. Come on. Yes. We are up. You know, there's no guarantees that it won't it'll happen again, but oh if we'd only been stuck on this side, there's a little shop there, look. <laughs> So we've uh, we've just got to another checkpoint. So the reason of these checkpoints is uh, they just want to see who's coming in and out of the area because they've had a you know bit of conflict in uh, Kashmir. So uh, guys are kind of heavily armed with automatic assault rifles. So yeah, I don't think I should be uh, actually filming, but um, they were very friendly. They asked us a few questions, uh, got us to take our helmets off, and. Um, there's like a bit of a, a survey in the way they were videoing it. It's quite quite bizarre, really. And uh, so I think there will be another check post. Well, they've just let us through. Right, so we've just hit a bit more traffic. Uh, we've just been filtering around these cliff edges, but it's so tight. Right, yeah, I can see the problem here. Look, you got the bus 
bear in mind we're supposed to be on the left but the bus can't get through on the left because uh, this overhang on the cliff yeah I think they've all got these uh, kind of ribbons on the car because it's celebration day <laughs> I'm through! So multiple security checks later, the ride to Daxham was one of the longest. 11 and a half hours of riding dirt, dust and off-road. Navigating through busy congested towns and villages, this ride became a race against time. Not only we're losing visibility, but we're also losing the daylight. And the last thing you want to be doing is riding these mountain roads at night. So this wasn't just a long day, it was a challenging day and one of the most rewarding days. So we're checking in the Paradise Hotel. We're gonna get a shower, a beer, and a bit of food. So I hope you like the video, guys. If you've not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Give us a like, and we'll see you in the next one. It's absolutely carnage around here. We've got some of our guys trapped. It's every man for himself. Do not get road rage with them. You will not win. And for safety, he's got his mask on. <laughs> oh, we could die here. We're going right, we're going right. This is absolute nuts. So the better road we're on at the minute. It's a, it's an actual runway.